Yo, Elliot, my question is about the last lesson I studied called Thou Shalt Be. That's the last lesson in the program. I've realized I'm addicted to pleasure and tend to overthink. Get my feet above the ground. I understood that I must face suffering and challenge. My question is how to start, how to, how to find middle ground. You know, I think it's interesting that we've been talking about fasting a lot today. And I think one of the first places to begin to find that middle ground, that equilibrium of mind, body, physiology, soul, is to refrain, right? To refrain. And fasting is, is to refrain. It's to refrain from eating. And it's a form of suffering. It's a form of challenge. You say you want to face suffering and face challenge, but it's so much more than that. By fasting, you, now you said I'm addicted to pleasure. So you're going to, you're going to pull yourself away from the pleasure. You say you have a tend to overthink. Well, you're not going to overthink when you're going through the fasting withdrawal symptoms, right? This is one of the things that has allowed my clearing to think up when I fast, uh, my thinking to clear up when I fast, because I'm not thinking so damn much that I don't get muddled in and tripping over my own thoughts, right? Sometimes that happens to us. We tripping over our own thoughts, but when you're afflicted, right? I love the word afflicted for fasting they use in the Bible. When you're afflicted, you're humbled. And when you're humbled, you're quiet. And when you're quiet, you're clear, right? So you're going to have that as a benefit. You're going to have so many different benefits, many of which I've spoken about in other videos, as well as throughout this program. And you're, you're at the end of the program with the Thou Shalt Be. And I would, I would encourage you to go back to the second commandment and fast and begin fasting and see the spiritual journey, see the physiological journey, see how your life evolves and changes is enhanced by practicing fasting on a cyclical basis. Either as we're doing this month through the month of February, uh, November, where we're doing 72 hour fast every week. I think that's a great way to go about it. It's the way I've done it for many years. Uh, or, you know, setting yourself apart for a time and fasting away from people, or even if you want to get started with intermittent fasting, time restricted eating, all this gets, allows you to get a grip on your lower nature. It all allows us to get a grip on our base instinct. Our, our fallen nature is very much tied to our animal instinct and man is a noble being. And that's why all these people say, oh, you're only human. Or people say, oh, you know, it's natural for you to, 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 to do and to feel and to engage in these bestial things, right? These, these, these animal things, right? We're behaving like animals. It's because it's unbefitting of mankind. It's unbefitting of man to be a slave to his hunger and a slave to his lust and a slave to his passions and a slave to pleasure. And a sl we're a slave to so many damn things. It's, it's unbecoming of a man. It is ignoble. Oh, what a great word. I'm going to start using that word. Ignoble, right? Because we're, no, we're created noble. You're a noble being, right? You're made in the likeness of an image of God, the imago Dei, the image of God, right? Rest on our heart. But when we're running around chasing food, chasing sex, chasing pleasure, feeling depressed, being anxious, we're getting in the way. And we, we can't, that reflection of God in us is sullied, right? Here's another way to look at it. If we are the image of God, we are, but we are not God, God's light is reflected in us. God's light is reflected in us through our will, through our intellect, through reason, right? These are, these are, these are things that animals don't have, right? Animals don't have reason. Man has reason. So for a man, for a man to reflect the divine quality of reason in his life, if he's a mirror, that mirror needs to be shined up, shined up, mirror up, shine up the mirror of God's reflection in you. You can't change God. God ain't going to change. God is always going to shed his light. But how mucky, how murky, how dirty is the mirror of your heart? And if, you're, if we're constantly eating, we're constantly consuming, we're constantly addicted, it's going to be muddled up and dirty. And so God's reflection will be very, it will be minimized. But if you want God's reflection to be bright, clean that mirror. How do you clean that mirror with the things that we're talking about right now? I love the word mortification. God's light is perfect. 
in 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 the spirit. In spirit, God is is is, is perfect. In all things, God is perfect. But in his manifestation, it's fallen, right? 3D, 3D, third dimension is dense, right? Third density, right? And so it's not as perfect, right? There are laws, there are laws of nature. There are laws of nature that we must subscribe to that are that are above and beyond, uh, are, are above, are that, that God is above and beyond, right? God doesn't, God doesn't literally, time and space, consider. Time and space, we're trapped by time and space, Right? We can't do anything without considering time and space. God is above and beyond the time-space continuum. Those laws don't apply to him. Right, So when we mortify the flesh, I love that term, like I said, when we mortify ourselves, that word mortify comes from mortification, right? To, 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 to be morbid is to, is to die, right? Morbidity rates means death rates, right? Morbid. To mortify the flesh, that means to die to the flesh, die to the things that are base, die to the things that are dense, die to the things that are heavy and become light, right? Become light, become light. And when people say light, you could think in terms of light like the sun. That's beautiful because look, if I'm, a, if I'm an image of the sun, God the Father, then his light can reflect in me. But I also tend to think it means light, like light on your feet. Meaning I'm not, I'm not dragged down by the, uh, by the anxieties of the world, right? And one of the ways you, you, you free yourself from care of the world through mortification is by facing your death through fasting. One of the reasons why people can't fast is because it, it reminds them of death, subconscious. There's a subconscious fear that I might die. Dave Asprey has a new book called Fast This Way. And of course, I've... I've I read every book about fasting because it's one of the things I'm most fascinated in. So I, I'm listening to his book on Audible right now, and he says the very same thing. So there's a lot that you can do to inspire yourself, motivate yourself. But the bottom line is discipline yourself to begin fasting. And I think that's the best way to start and to find that middle ground. The middle ground will be apparent to you when you're no longer uh, addicted and attached to the body, the flesh, our fallen nature. And when you mortify it and you become light, you will see. Okay, brother, I hope that helps, dude. I'm done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.